Let's talk about how to enter your eBay invoice fees. So when you import in your CSV, it has lots of different fees listed on it for you already. But what I have found from looking at a few different eBay seller accounts is sometimes your invoice has additional fees that aren't listed on the CSV. So I don't want you to miss those. When you go back to your seller hub and hover over payments and go to reports and pull up this screen with these tabs, reports, statements, and invoices, we already imported in our report. That was the transaction report CSV. I showed you how you can reconcile that net profit line to the statement for the calendar month if you have one. And you also can go to invoices and get any additional fees for that time period. So find your invoice for whatever time period you just did your books and click the download button and you will see some fees here. Now you don't necessarily need to enter the total due that you paid because some of these fees you already accounted for on your books when you import in your CSV. We just want to enter in any fees that we're missing that are on this invoice that we're missing from the CSV. The tricky part is just figuring out what fees here you've already imported in and which ones aren't included in this total already that you'll need to manually type in. So I do have a little bit of like a guide, a cheat sheet in the instructions um, to help you sort, but you may have to do a little bit of legwork just to ensure that whatever you're entering is not something that was already entered. So I'll tell you, usually shipping fees and promoted listing fees are not already included on your spreadsheet. So the shipping labels generally don't include those shipping fees and the ad fees, those promoted listing fees are not showing up on your CSV at all. So those two, usually you want to enter in. A good thing to confirm wherever any of these fees are coming from. You can scroll down and they will give you a breakout detail of where those fees are coming from, how they're getting totaled. So we had $22.97 in shipping fees showing up on the invoice. It's made up of these two transactions. You can, If you're ever in doubt, you can search for these amounts on the CSV that you imported in. You can just go to that tab and click uh, Control F or go to Edit Find and enter in that dollar amount. And um, look, this is an order, but we're looking for something showing up as shipping. So um, I don't have anything else for 815. So I know that that 815 isn't included on my CSV already. And that lets me feel comfortable to enter this 2297 as an additional shipping fee. So you may choose to enter that on your eBay invoice fees here. I'm going to type it in um, as a formula in case I add multiple stuff to it. So I'm going to start out with equals. 2297, no spaces, and just hit enter and be done with that guy for now. To confirm those promoted listing fees, I'm seeing $10.20 show up here. Nothing is coming in as advertising. I can see the breakout of those promoted listing fees again if I want to scroll down into the detail. See these promoted listing fee fees section here. Scroll down, get the individual breakout of each one if I want to see that amount of detail. But the total is $10.20. So I'm gonna go ahead and either choose to add that to that same 2297, which is why I said you could set it up as a formula and add them together. Or if you want to enter those promoted listing fees as an actual advertising expense, you can go over to your advertising tab and enter it there. Make sure you give it a date. I usually choose the last day of the month. Um, and if you enter it that way, you'll see it populating here. And that would mean you don't want to enter it on the invoice fees row because then you'd be double counting it. You may see some other things showing up on your invoice here. Final value fees and international fees, you have already imported those in from your CSV. You may notice like in the case of my final uh, value fees, it's slightly different than the fixed and variable fees that I imported in. That's because the CSV, this formula is already taking refunded and credited and adjusted fees into account. Um, so it's like net of any adjustments or refunds you issued, like you've added those fees back. And these are your adjust, these are your final value fees on your gross sales before taking any of those adjustments or anything into account. Um, but it should all end up balancing out because those corrections, those adjustments and everything will show up elsewhere in your bill and you don't need to re-enter them. 
So you'll see here, if I actually take the 68038 and then subtract out the credited fees of $7.43, that equals $672.95. So it matches, it reconciles. Um, and that's the next thing that I was going to say is sometimes you will have fee corrections, credits, or insertion fees listed here. Um, and those are the one tricky thing. As I explain here, sometimes you're going to have fee, uh, sometimes you're going to have credits and insertion fees, credits and insertion fees that may or may not already be listed on your CSV. So this is when you need to drill down into the breakout that they give you to figure out if it's already there. I can tell you usually if it's a bigger amount like this, um, that's already accounted for and you can check by matching the net of the fees to the fee total minus that credit. Um, but like this fee correction of 30 cents, I need to figure out if this is already included on my CSV or not. So I'm gonna go look for the actual transaction. So it looks like I got a 30 cent fee correction credit on January 3rd. And I do have an adjustment showing up here on January 26th but this is related to something else. If I search my invoice for 30 cents, I'm actually gonna see this payment adjustment on January 27th. So I'm gonna assume that that adjustment is related to that transaction and this 30 cent credit is something else. I don't know, it gets really confusing really fast. Just verify as best as you can and I'm gonna enter a credit, which means that it's gonna be a negative ex expense. I'm like adding back my expenses of 30 cents here. So those are the three things on this invoice that I needed to add to the spreadsheet. Um, and again, keep your own little cheat sheet. You know, you can copy this table and add it to your own monthly notes for things to look out for. Hopefully your invoice is not as confusing as this example. Um, most of them I've seen just have one or two things on it, but I wanted to give you a complicated example in case you do see some of these things. And let's run through one more. I'm going to pull the February invoice just to give you one more example here. So again, we want to go row by row and figure out what was already imported in. This is another complicated invoice um, and what was not already there. So first we have an insertion fee of 30 cents. I have already crawled through my February uh, CSV for the month and that insertion fee is not here. So I'm gonna enter that insertion fee of 30 cents. It's an expense this time, it's not a credit. So it's gonna be a positive number to increase my expenses. Subscription and one-time fees do not show up on the CSV at all. So I'm going to add in that 119.90 here as an invoice fee. Shipping fees, same thing. I might double check that that 1313 is not already included in my shipping labels. So I'm gonna scroll down. So I've got one shipping label here for 1313 and it's from a January 22nd transaction. I think maybe what ends up happening is that if you are printing shipping labels, maybe for these transactions from prior months, they show up on the next month's invoice instead of that month's CSV. So just to verify, I'm gonna go into that February CSV. I'm going to do Control F and search for 1313. I don't find it, so that lets me feel pretty confident that that 1313 needs to be added to it. I could add it right here to the eBay invoice fees like I just did, or I could even consider putting it directly on the postage tab. Promoted listing fees, same thing. I don't have anything showing up for advertising fees this month, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter that for the month. Remembering that February has fewer days in it. My next two are final value fees and international fees. My international fees match. My final value fees on my spreadsheet is a tiny bit lower. And remember I said I can check that. I can add up the 731. 93 for final value fees on the invoice. And I'm just gonna subtract out um, the credits here, this bigger credits number, which is 1228. Those are like refunded fees I got credited and that matches to my net fees right here, 71965. So that lets me know that both this number and this number have already been entered 
What about my measly 15 cent credit here? I'm gonna scroll down and see if I can find it. I've got something here um, for a, what, credited insertion fee. I don't see any insertion fees showing up anywhere on my CSV. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that 15 cent and it's a credit. So I wanna reduce my expenses by 15 cents. So I'm going to subtract out that 15 cents. And that is another example of how I enter everything on this invoice into the spreadsheet and kind of verify if it's already been included or not. Remembering that you can always scroll down to drill more into the detail of those invoice fee transactions if you need that information to figure out where that fee came from. If you need more help too, I will leave some of these links in the instructions. eBay has a really good breakdown of what all these fees are if you need help figuring out why you're even paying them or what's showing up or what that means. You can dig into their customer service database for more information on that.